That is when I played this song, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, with a show called Christmas with the Celts. For about five years, I toured all over the place with them. And I don't think I've played that song since. But it's the right time of year, and you know, it occurred to me that I don't have a lot of Christmas stuff on my YouTube channel, and people probably want to learn how to play these songs on the whistle, and this one happens to fit really well. So let's break it down. <laughs> So there's two parts of this song, like any good Irish tune would have. I have no idea if this is an Irish tune, probably not. But be that as it may, here's the beginning part, what I would call the A part. I'm playing a little faster than I usually break these tunes down. I'm, I'm only doing that because I assume you've probably at least heard the song a few times, so the melody's probably in there. But I'll run it again just so we get it. actual song that's going to repeat, play that song, that line twice, then we have what I'm calling the B part. It's kind of that second line there, we'll run that one again. Then the wrap up part, good tidings of comfort and joy and all that. There's a fair bit working on that one, I'll run that one again. Now, I used to play this as a march, so the ornaments that I do kind of fit that sort of vibe. Certainly not the only way to play it, but it's kind of how I did it for a long time. That's what I'm going to break down here, and that's typically how I would hear this song. Very kind of, um, you know, marchy. I'll do a short roll on the E, and then short roll on the B. To me, that just gives it that, that kind of marchy sort of punch. You could tap it. Then I'll do that crossing noise on the G, and double tap on the F. That E is sort of a, um, sort of a triple roll, I guess. Just depends how I land on that. Now when you come back to that B, I do that piping ornament uh, in slow motion there. It usually only works going from the A to the B, or at least that's the time that it works the best for me. Um, so I'll throw that in there as just kind of a cool way to punch it up. I think it sounds kind of cool. Only thing I do there, sliding into that B. And when I get to the D, just doing a double tap. Sort of a double cut, really, sorry. Hitting those two, kind of like a bottom half of a crayon. And popping that A, I always do that kind of B to A change. I've demonstrated that a lot. Cool popping effect. Uh, then doing a, a short roll on the F sharp. Keeping it simple, that's probably how I would do it. It's easy to overdo it there. Sliding into that A. Could do that bubbly part on the B again, or nothing wrong with the slide there, that certainly works. Couple of uh, short rolls there. The only important bit there is that, that rhythmic accent. That 
kind of triplet note in there. It has that nice little punch to it, and it's, and it's good to, to tongue that just to give that accent and, and really, that, that's kind of the hook of this tune to me, rhythmically. Mostly that's just a lot of slides and, and crossing noises. Sort of nice, subtle, simple ornaments, I think, to, to land on it. That's how I like doing it. There's loads of ways to play this. You can play it more of, as an air or, or more of a dance tune. I kind of learned it as a march. That's how I've heard a lot. So let me know what you think, and I'll see if I can crank out a couple more of these Christmas ones. If you guys dig it and think it's worth learning, worth playing, let me know. See you all in the next one. Cheers.